and welcome to Sherwood New Life Church. We are so glad that you are here and um, looking forward to spending this time with you. And we are going to be looking at lessons for life and lessons found in 1 Samuel. And uh, last October, I started uh, studying the book of 1 Samuel. And 1 Samuel is what we call a narrative. So it's it's almost like it's a, um, it's a story. It tells a story. And so looking for lessons in there, um, you have to do some research and you have to do some study, but the lessons are there and we can learn from these people in, in this book. And so that's what we are doing. And today we're going to be looking at 1 Samuel 3 and the whole chapter. I'm not actually going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to talk about it, but I would encourage you to open your Bibles and look it up and read it for yourself and look at at um, all the details of the story because um, it's really important. Um, so, where do you go when God calls? That's what we're gonna we're gonna ask. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for this lesson that we can see in the story of Samuel and um, and, and Eli. And so. Lord, I pray that you would show us what you would have us to learn from your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before I get started, if you could push that like and subscribe button, that helps um, you to know when we have new vi videos that are ready to watch, and we would really appreciate that, and we, it helps us out too. So 1 Samuel 3, and I want to... Um, read just a few verses here in 1 Samuel 3. It says, Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli, and word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. And it happened at that time that Eli was lying down in his place. Now his eyesight had begun to grow dim, and he could not see well. Verse 3, And the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, that the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Samuel said, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went, and he laid down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he answered, and he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. You know, I wonder, and I even made a note in the margins um, for myself. I wonder if Eli kind of got irritated by this point, you know, and maybe said it with a, a tone of, um, I did not call my son, go lie down. <laughs> Get back to bed. Uh, so anyway, verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. So in other words, Samuel was serving. Samuel was serving, but he didn't have that personal relationship um, with God yet. He was going through the motions. He was, he was dedicated in what he was doing, but he did not have that, that personal relationship and commitment there yet. Verse 8, so the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli discerned, or figured out, that the Lord was calling the boy. And Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came and stood and, and called, as at other times, Samuel. Samuel, and Samuel said, speak, for thy servant is listening. And I want to stop right there. Um, God goes on to give Samuel um, some insight to what is going to happen to Eli and his family. And, um, and he's frightened by what God says, and later on in the chapter, I'm not going to take the time to read it right now, but later on in the chapter, the next morning, um, Eli says, Samuel, what did God say? And 
uh, and he could tell that Samuel was afraid. <laughs> Samuel didn't want to give the message that he had from God. But um, Eli says to him, give it, tell me, it's all right. And so he gives it, and he is obedient to God. But what I want to bring out here, and, you know, this is a story that is taught in Sunday school and children's church, you know, as as uh, little kids are growing up, and, and, and it's a good lesson. It's a good lesson. I'm listening, Lord. But what I want to um, bring out today is when God calls us, what do we do? What do we do? What is our first response to God? You know, for myself, I, I'll be real honest and tell you, my first response usually is, uh-uh. <laughs> nope. Nope. Not going to do that. I don't want to do that. Lord, I, um, nope. Nope. Not going to do that. Is that your first response? You know, we have responses. And the first one that um, is probably real popular is we try to, to run away. Remember the story of Jonah? Jonah ran away. He, he, he said, no, I am not going to that evil city of Nineveh. You can't make me. And he's right. God cannot make us. He, he can. He chooses not to make us. He wants us to be obedient um, of our own free will. But uh, Jonah said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And he did whatever he could to run away. And, but when that happens, it usually doesn't end up well for Jonah. He ended up in the belly of a whale. Um, about a month ago, I was on vacation and I went to Alaska with my mom and dad, my brother and his, and my sister-in-law. In fact, I have one of my Alaska shirts on and, um, uh, it was very fascinating. We went to Skagway, Alaska, little itty bitty tiny little town, but we were able to uh, take a railroad ride, um, a train ride, um, and it was up through the mountains to the Yukon Territory. And this was where the gold rush happened in the early 1900s. And to get to the Yukon Territory, you had to travel to Skagway and then um, there was no railroad at that time. They had to make the trip, the 20 miles up the mountain. And I mean up, it's up. And um, to the Yukon Territory. And they didn't just make that trip one time. They had to um, have a certain amount of food and, and what they called stores, uh, uh, stuff, supplies. Um, before Canada would let them into the Yukon Territory to look for gold, they had to prove that, that they had enough supplies that they wouldn't die there or that they could um, survive the winter in the Yukon Territory. And so we were told that it took about 20 trips up and down that mountain to get their supplies into the Yukon Territory before they would be let in. And so it was amazing what they had to go through. And I thought about Jonah and I thought, man, I wonder how many of those, uh, of those people who made their way to Skagway, Alaska, and then made that, that horrible trip up the mountain so many times to look for gold, what were they running away from? And um, if you listen to the history of Skagway um, and the, the things that went on in the town during the gold rush era, um, there were a lot of people who were running away. They were running away from things down in the lower 48 that they uh, wanted to get away from. And so, you know, down through the ages, man has not changed. We do whatever we can to get away from what God wants us to do. And when God calls us, what do we run to? Well, let's look at a few things. Number one is entertainment. You know, we have we have our we have our devices, don't we? We have our phones, we have our laptops, we have um, 
We have all kinds of entertainment. We have games on our phones. We have uh, we have our game gaming devices. We have Xboxes. We have all kinds of things. Just recently, this past week, I um, played on a virtual virtual reality setup that was amazing, and it was a lot of fun. Even at my age, it was really fun, and I thought this would be very dangerous for me to have because I could waste a lot of time playing on this. And so we come up with all kinds of different forms of entertainment. And you know, back in the day, years and years and years and years ago, before all of this, um, the sources of entertainment were uh, few and far between. You know, we, we have entertainment at our fingertips and their entertainment back in the day, you know, was like maybe a barn dance once a month or, um, you know, they went to church, uh, yes, for religious reasons, but also that was the, the way that they had friendships because they couldn't just pick up the phone and call each other. And so entertainment was not what it is today. When radio came along, that was a big deal. You know, everybody gathered around the radio to listen. And then TV came along and then we just, you know, fast forward through, you know, all that we have today. So we turn to entertainment because it's easy and it, 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 um, it occupies our mind. And then we don't have to think about what God is saying to us. Maybe we turn to food. Not just food, alcohol, drugs. Yeah, maybe maybe you don't drink. Maybe you don't take drugs. But how much food do you consume? You know, we as Americans consume more calories than our bodies actually need. And we train our brains to say, I'm hungry. When we're not hungry, we're just bored or we just want to eat. Yeah, it's a psychological thing. And we use that. Maybe it's hobbies. Maybe it's hunting or fishing. Um, or, or maybe it's, um, you know, I don't know, scrapbooking, knitting, crocheting, decorating your house, um, gardening. These are all good things unless you're using them to run away from what God is asking you to do. Maybe it's shopping, <clears throat> retail therapy, you know, that two sides of that, you're running away from God. Maybe you're spending money that you don't have or that you can't afford to spend L instead of listening to what God is telling you to do. Another good thing that can also be used is friends and family. You know, I have a big family and we like to spend time together and, um, it would be fine to spend several days a week with them. I would enjoy that. But you know what? If I did that, then I'm running away from what God is calling me to do. Maybe you run away from God and, and find that escape in your work. Maybe uh, you, you've said, no, I need money. I, I'm going to make as much money as I possibly can because that's what I need to do instead of relying on God to provide for you if you say yes to what he's calling you to do. Anything that gets us away from God is what we run to when we're trying to avoid the call of God. Number two, maybe we listen, but then we try to do it our way. We negotiate with God. Have you ever negotiated with God? You know, we say, okay, God, I'll do that, but I'm not going to do it in the exact way that you've asked me to do, I'm going to do it this way because I like this way better. You know, when we do that, we have just put God in a box and we have said, I don't want to do it your way. And you have no idea what God may have in store for you. You have no idea. Uh, the, the miracles that he wants to perform, um, the, the things that he wants to show his people that he can do um, when you don't do it his way. We disobey and we try to do our own version. And then number three, we listen and obey. 
you realize that that um, Samuel didn't know it was God the first three times that he called. And that's not Samuel's fault. But when Eli told him after that third time, this is what you need to do. You need to say, I'm here, Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak to me. Then Samuel did what he was told to do the very next time that God called him. Now, uh, he listened, but he was afraid. He was afraid of what God told him to do. And that's understandable, isn't it? Because we do the same exact thing. Um, but he did what he was told to do, even though he was afraid. How many of you have been afraid? Have you ever not done what God told you to do, even though you listened to what he had to say? Well, we need to take a lesson from Samuel. And even though we're afraid, we need to act on what God tells us to do and be obedient. And you know, in the long run, when Samuel was obedient to listening to God and acting on what he was told, number one, he learned what God's voice sounded like. And number two, he was established as a prophet in Israel. Everybody um, came to know Samuel as a prophet of God because he listened to what God had to say when he said something was going to happen. God caused it to happen and he was he could be trusted as a prophet of God. Will you listen what God to what God is saying to you today? Maybe he's not calling you right now. Maybe he's not talking to you right now. But I want you to be ready to listen in the future to when God is calling you, that you will be ready to listen and to obey and follow through and act on what he has for you. And maybe today you've been running away like Jonah. Maybe you've been running away like the, the gold rushers who ran away to all the way to Skagway, Alaska, and then made 20 trips up and down um, the mountain into the Yukon Territory just to get away from um, God's call. Don't be that person. Listen. Say, yes, Lord, here I am. Your servant is listening. Will you do that today? Listen and you'd be amazed what God has for you. Let's pray. Lord, I just ask that you just be with each person. Father, I pray that if you are speaking to someone today, that they would listen to your voice and that they would listen, not run away, and that they would obey, that they would do what you are asking them to do. And Lord, I pray if someone is running away, that they will turn and go the opposite direction. Instead of running away from you, they would run towards you and say, okay, now I'm listening, Lord. And for those who have not heard your voice, Lord, I pray that when they do, when you do call them, that they will listen and be obedient. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for Samuel's example because he is just like all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. I am so excited because next week at the church, we are having... Um, we are having breakfast and baptisms. And so if you can be here in person, that would be fantastic. We will still have a short um, message here next week, but um, we will be meeting in person and out in our parking lot and uh, 10 o'clock a.m. at 15631 Southeast Oregon Street in Sherwood, Oregon. Have a great day. Have a great 4th of July. We'll see you next week.